So in this video, we're going to continue with laser dynamics or the laser frequency response. Uh, and we're going to try and solve the differential equations that we presented last time. So the first one, uh, and let's, let's deal with this first, was in terms of the photon, the number of photons within our cavity. And so that uh, differential equation is just that the rate of change of the number of photons is just our stimulated emission term. So uh, our stimulated times our active region volume minus uh, the number of photons that we lose to our to the outside world, uh, NP divided by our photon lifetime, tau P. Now we said in the previous video that when we apply some DC current plus some change in that current, uh, every one of these components is going to now have a DC term. So our stimulated emission is going to have a DC term plus some uh, AC term, some change, uh, some small signal change. And so we can rewrite the equation. Uh, so just blindly plugging in this fact that we're always going to have some DC term plus some AC term. Uh, so the time derivative of this DC term plus delta N dt, this should be equal to R stimulated plus delta R or our DC component plus our AC component. And our active region volume doesn't change as a function of time, presumably. Um, minus the number of photons, which also has a DC term, uh, and then an AC term. Now, uh, the time derivative of something that's constant with time, this guy here is just zero, so this is gonna drop out. And also, uh, since all of these individual AC terms, we're assuming that they're functions of time, and I haven't written that explicitly here, but they are all functions of time, and all these DC terms are not functions of time. So all these DC terms are not functions of time. And since we've got a zero, so uh, on this side, we've got zero plus D delta N DT, uh, this has to be equal to all of our DC terms. So R stimulated zero uh, times our active region volume uh, minus our DC photon uh, photon count divided by the lifetime, uh, plus our AC term, so delta R stimulated, let me put that subscript back in, times our active region minus delta N over tau P. Now notice that this is all a function of time, and this is a function of time, uh, but this is not a function of time, and this must, the two sides must be equal, so this whole term uh, must be equal to zero. And you could just get that, uh, you can get that many different ways, but this is my, my personal favorite argument. And so we're left with our differential equation just being uh, the rate of change of the small signal uh, change in photons. Now oh, this should be NP. This is just equal to our small, small signal change in stimulated emission uh, minus our small signal change in photons divided by our photon lifetime. So now all we need to do is figure out this guy, this delta R stimulated term. Um, and we, we said in the previous video and in other videos as well, uh, that we can just write the stimulated emission as our, or let's actually write this whole term. So delta R, or let's write R stimulated times our active region volume. Uh, this is just VG times our gain, uh, which is a function of the carrier density, times our confinement factor times our number of photons. But we're looking for this delta term, so delta R stimulated times our active region volume. So we need to plug in uh, the expected changes on this side, and we can figure out what this delta R stimulated should be. And so let's just blindly do that. Um, well, the groove velocity we don't expect to change, gamma we don't expect to change, but our gain, which is a function of the carrier density, we expect that to change, and the number of photons we expect to change. So uh, let's just plug stuff in. So what is the, the total R stimulated? Um, this is what we're looking for, but we're just going to plug in the entire thing. So we've got a VG gamma hanging around out front. And then our uh, gain is just going to be our DC gain plus the change in gain. And then our number of photons is our DC number of photons plus our change in number of photons. And uh, we can expand this out a little bit more. So G naught 
NP naught plus delta G NP naught plus delta G delta NP. And then we've got an extra G naught delta NP. Now, uh, since one of these terms involves the change in two small quantities, uh, we can ignore this guy. So delta G is gonna be small and delta N are gonna be small. So this term is gonna be much smaller than the other three. Um, and we also said that we're interested in our delta R stimulated times our active region volume. So we can also get rid of this DC term because we're gonna need to subtract it. Uh, so our delta R stimulated times our active region volume, this is just VG gamma delta G times our DC number of photons plus our DC gain times our change in number of photons. And we can also write this delta G term in terms of the uh, photon or in terms of the carrier density because we know that G is a function of the carrier density. Uh, and we know that it's approximately a logarithm, but since that involves a G naught term, I'm gonna not write that out here. Uh, and we're just gonna say that delta G can be just written as whatever the derivative uh, is with respect to the carrier density. And I'm gonna call this G prime. So this is just a number, you can calculate it. Uh, if you have the gain as a function of carrier density curve, uh, and you know what your gain is at DC, uh, so your G naught value, then you can figure out what the slope is. Uh, and this is just your G prime. And then we multiply this by delta N. So this is just the linear term of our Taylor series expansion for delta G, because we want these equations to be linear. Otherwise, we can't really solve them uh, in the ways that we're used to doing. Now we can rewrite our full differential equation down below. Uh, so let's plug everything in. Uh, what was the first thing we had? We had our delta R stimulated term, uh, which is just this VG gamma, uh, delta G is G prime delta N, uh, plus VG gamma, uh, now we've got a G naught term, delta N photons, uh, and then we've got our photon lifetime, so delta NP over tau P. So this is the full equation that we have now for our, the change in our number of photons, delta NP. And notice it's also got uh, a, a little delta N here, or our carrier density. And so this is a coupled differential equation. We, we, want to, we want to solve it in the context of the other one as well. Now we can do something kind of clever. Uh, we can say that, well, we don't know what our DC gain is, but it's probably gonna be very close to the threshold gain. Uh, because if we're operating this laser with very high power, we're going to be well above uh, that knee. So we're going to be operating somewhere up here. And our gain is going to be super, super close to its threshold value. So I'm going to replace this with the threshold gain. But also, uh, the threshold gain we said before was just defined as 1 over gamma Vg times our photon lifetime. And so if we plug that in here, these two terms cancel. And we're left with a beautifully simple equation, uh, which is nothing like the ugly mess that we started with. Oh, sorry, this, uh, this should be d delta n dt. Uh, so we're left with a beautiful equation, which is just in terms of a single, uh, we've got a single term on each side. So vg gamma g prime delta n. And if we're interested in the frequency response, now we can just replace this derivative with a j omega, uh, or an s if you want the Laplace transform. And we can use this to solve for delta n, so little delta n, our carrier density, because ultimately we're looking for everything in terms of the number of photons in, inside our cavity, because this will give us the output power. So we want to eliminate uh, this carrier density wherever we see it in our equations. Uh, and we see that if, if you just divide both sides by this guy, uh, delta N is just gonna be J omega delta NP divided by VG gamma G prime. Actually, so sorry, it looks like I forgot, I've dropped one of my, one of my terms. So this NP naught somehow disappeared uh, when I rewrote this equation. So there should be an NP naught here in front of this delta N. So our DC number of photons and we can rewrite that here. So that also goes here. 
NP naught delta N, and then we've got an NP naught in our denominator here. And so this is our final result. Uh, and we can now plug this in uh, anywhere in our carrier rate equation, which involves the rate of change of our carrier density, or uh, once we transform it, the rate of change of our small signal carrier density, uh, then we can plug this in anywhere we see delta n. And if we're being precise, uh, this should really be delta n as a function of omega. We can plug this in anywhere we see it in our, new, in our uh, carrier rate equation, and then we can solve for everything in terms of delta np, which will give us our output power. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please give it a like below and subscribe to my channel. Uh, also, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post those down below. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.